Hi, I'm Maya. Before I dive into my story, please don't forget to like and subscribe for more real-life tales. Growing up, I always felt like just another kid at school, blending into the background, navigating quizzes, lunch breaks, and the occasional drama over who got to be the line leader. But home? Home was a different battlefield. Here, I wasn't just Maya. I was the fragile one, the delicate sister who seemed to need an invisible shield of protection. Why are you always on her side? Elsie's voice would often pierce the calm of our living room, her words tinged with bitterness. Our parents, sitting across the coffee table, exchanged worried glances before turning their attention back to her. It's not about sides, Elsie, Dad would start, his voice attempting calmness. It's just that Maya needs a bit more... A bit more of what? Attention? Care? Elsie would cut in, her eyes narrowing. What about me? When I won that art competition, you barely looked up from her latest medical report. Mom sighed, setting down her tea. We're proud of you too, honey. But your sister... Gets everything she needs and more, Elsie finished, standing up abruptly, the chair screeching against the hardwood floor. What about what I need? This was a common scene in our house, the air often thick with unspoken words and resentment. My heart ached to bridge the gap, but I was also trapped, a prisoner in a war I never wanted to fight. One evening, I tried to reach out to Elsie as she sketched in her room, the only place she claimed as hers. The room was filled with her artwork, vibrant colors clashing with the moody blues and grays she favored. I don't want all this fuss about me. Elsie finally looked up, her expression softening a bit. I hate it, Elsie. I hate that they see me as someone who needs to be fixed or protected. I want to be strong like you, to not faint at the slightest sign of stress. Is that what this is about? You think I'm strong? She asked, her voice losing some of its edge. I know you are, I replied, stepping closer to her. I've seen you handle stuff that would make me pass out. Literally. A small laugh escaped her, and for a moment, it seemed like we might bridge the gap. Maybe I just want them to see me too. Not just as your backup. I nodded, understanding her more than before. Let's help them see us both. Not just me or you, but both Elsie and Maya. She considered this then, for the first time in a long while. She smiled genuinely. Maybe. But it's going to take more than just a chat, Maya. Let's start with tomorrow, I suggested. Help me show them that I can handle more, and I'll make sure they see your next art project first. The shimmering lights in our backyard flickered like tiny stars borrowed from the night sky, transforming it into a makeshift wonderland for my sweet sixteen. Friends from school mingled, the music a constant upbeat backdrop to laughter and conversation. The night was supposed to be a celebration, a milestone in my life that everyone seemed eager to share with me. Looks like you're having fun. Elsie said, approaching me with a smile that didn't quite reach her eyes. Her voice was light, but there was an edge to it that I knew all too well. Yeah, it's a great night. Thanks for being here, Elsie, I replied, trying to include her in my happiness, hoping it might ease the bitterness I knew she felt. Oh, I wouldn't miss it for the world, she responded, her smile widening just a bit too much. In fact, I have a special gift for you. Before I could react or even step back, she grabbed the bucket. Here's to being the center of attention, always, she exclaimed, and poured the entire contents over my head. The cold shock of the eggs, combined with the sudden weight and the slimy sensation dripping down my face, jolted through me. Gasps and sudden silence replaced the music and laughter. I stood frozen, the yolks and whites sliding down my hair, my dress pooling at my feet. The world began to spin, a cold numbness spreading through my limbs. And then, everything went dark. The sterile smell of the hospital was a stark contrast to the lingering scent of eggs and outdoor jasmine from my disastrous sweet sixteen. Lying in the hospital bed, I tried to piece together the fragments of that evening. The laughter, the music, and then the chilling shock of betrayal that left me unconscious. During one of the quiet afternoons, Elsie walked into my room. Her footsteps were hesitant a soft echo on the linoleum floor. Hey, Maya, I'm... I'm sorry about the other night, she said, her voice low, the usual fire behind her words reduced to uncertain embers. I turned to look at her, seeing not just my sister, but the years of resentment she carried like a heavy cloak. Why, Elsie? Why did you do it? I asked, the hurt clear in my voice. I don't know. I just... 
I guess I wanted to make a point, she replied, looking away, her fingers twisting a piece of her shirt. The apology hung between us, heavy and hollow. As soon as I was discharged, a nagging feeling of unresolved questions about our family dynamics drove me to my father's study. I wasn't looking for justifications, but understanding. There, hidden among the many books on genetics and family health, I found an old, dusty medical book about Debole syndrome. Flipping through the pages, I discovered that Debole syndrome was a rare genetic condition that often caused extreme physical reactions to stress, including fainting. The symptoms matched mine so precisely it was almost a relief. Finally, something made sense. This was why my parents had always been so protective, so fearful of any stress in my life. It wasn't favoritism, but fear. Armed with this knowledge, I approached my parents that evening at dinner. I found the book in Dad's study. About Debole syndrome, I started, placing the book on the table. Their expressions changed, a mix of shock and resignation painting their features. We didn't want to worry you, Maya, Mom explained, her voice soft but sad. We just wanted to protect you from the pressures that could... Well, that did happen at your party. But what about me? Doesn't she deserve to know why I've been treated differently? Elsie interjected sharply, her tone a mix of anger and curiosity. We thought we were doing the best for both of you, Dad added, his voice steady, but his eyes not meeting mine or Elsie's. We never meant to make you feel less loved, Elsie. We just... We had to manage Maya's condition. Understanding dawned on Elsie's face, and though it didn't excuse her actions, it started to bridge the chasm of misunderstanding between us. I wish I'd known, she murmured, more to herself than to anyone else. As the evening wore on, we discussed more about my condition and the implications it had on all of our lives. It wasn't a complete resolution, but it was a start, a chance to heal and possibly forgive. The revelation didn't erase the years of hurt and rivalry, but it laid a foundation for empathy, a way forward from the rubble of my ruined birthday. The day of Elsie's college acceptance celebration was filled with a mix of anticipation and nervous energy. Our living room was transformed with streamers and balloons, echoing the festive atmosphere that had been so cruelly shattered at my own party. Yet beneath the decorations and congratulations, there was an undercurrent of tension that both Elsie and I felt acutely. As family and a few close friends gathered around, clinking glasses and sharing laughs, I knew this was the moment for the revelation that had been burning inside me since I discovered the truth about my condition. I didn't want revenge. I wanted understanding, for Elsie, for our parents, and for everyone who had been caught in the crossfire of our family's silent battle. With a deep breath, I tapped my glass gently, the sound cutting through the chatter. Can I have everyone's attention for a moment? There's something important I need to share, I announced, my voice steady despite the fluttering in my stomach. The room quieted, all eyes turning to me. Today we are here to celebrate Elsie's incredible achievement, I began, and I couldn't be prouder of her. But there's also something I need to clarify, something personal that has affected our family dynamics for a long time. As some of you know, I've had health issues that seemed overblown or mysterious. What most of you don't know is that I have Debole syndrome, a genetic condition that makes me extremely sensitive to stress. Murmurs of surprise and concern rippled through the room as I continued. This condition is why my parents have always been overly protective of me. It's not favoritism, as it might have seemed, but fear. Fear of what could happen if I'm stressed. I paused, letting the information sink in, then turned slightly towards Elsie, who stood frozen, her face a mask of mixed emotions. Elsie, I know you've felt overshadowed and neglected because of this and I'm sorry for the pain it's caused you. That night, at my birthday, I didn't understand your actions. But now, I hope we can move forward with a new understanding. The silence that followed was profound. The shift in the room was palpable as understanding dawned on many faces, turning their attention to Elsie, whose earlier actions now seemed not just out of jealousy, but a misdirected cry for attention in a narrative she didn't fully understand. Elsie swallowed hard, her eyes darting around the room before settling on me. I... I didn't know, she finally said, her voice barely above a whisper. I just felt so angry all the time, like I was invisible. You're not invisible, not to me, I replied, reaching out to her. Maybe now, we can all see more clearly. 
The room slowly resumed its earlier buzz, but with a new layer of conversations, whispers of sympathy, nods of understanding, and a family beginning to heal. As I watched Elsie mingle with a less heavy step, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. This was not just her acceptance celebration. It was a night of revelations, and hopefully, the beginning of reconciliation for us all. In the weeks following the revelation at Elsie's celebration, the atmosphere in our home shifted palpably. Though the air still carried a faint edge of past grievances, there was also a budding sense of hope, a desire to move forward that hadn't been there before. I could feel the change not just in the words spoken, but also in the unspoken, in the spaces between conversations that had once been filled with tension. My parents, once frequent contributors to the imbalance with their overprotectiveness, now made conscious efforts to balance their attention and support. We're sorry, Maya, for any pain our actions might have caused both of you, Mom said one evening as we sat in the living room, a rare moment of family reflection. We have a lot to make up for, to both of you. It wasn't just my relationship with my parents that transformed. Friends and extended family members who had learned about my condition reached out, offering support and understanding that I had never expected. Amidst this outpouring of support, Elsie found herself grappling with her own set of challenges. The truth about my condition, coupled with her actions at my party, left her isolated. A situation she had, in many ways, created for herself. Yet, despite the space between us, I noticed the subtle changes in her. She was quieter, more reflective, and less prone to the bursts of anger that had once defined our interactions. One afternoon, I found her alone in the backyard, staring pensively at the garden. Hey, I approached cautiously, not wanting to intrude but feeling the pull of sisterhood stronger than ever. How are you holding up? Elsie turned, her expression a mixture of surprise and relief. I've been better, she admitted, a hint of vulnerability in her voice. But I'm also learning a lot, about myself, about us. But maybe it's also a chance for us to start over, you know? We could try to understand each other better. She nodded the corner of her mouth twitching in a tentative smile. I'd like that, she said. I'm sorry, Maya, for everything. I know, I replied, placing a hand on her shoulder. And I forgive you. Not because it's easy, but because holding on to anger doesn't help either of us. As we sat together, watching the sunset and casting long shadows over the garden, I felt a sense of peace. This wasn't just about overcoming a moment of humiliation or winning a silent war of favoritism. It was about finding strength in vulnerability, about choosing forgiveness and understanding over resentment and retaliation. The path ahead wouldn't be easy or without its stumbles. But as I looked at Elsie, I saw not just the sister who had wronged me, but the sister who was also ready to mend our fractured bond. Together, we could rebuild. Not just our relationship, but also our individual selves strengthened by honesty and the quiet resilience that comes from truly seeing and forgiving each other. Has the story of Maya and Elsie reached its conclusion? How do you think forgiveness and understanding can change the dynamics in a family? Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. Let's discuss how open conversations might transform relationships, even those strained by years of misunderstandings. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed the story, and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Your support helps us keep bringing these stories to you. Let's keep the conversation going.